The first thing that anybody notices when they come into the office, of course, is that there are a lot more records than books on display. There are probably a couple of thousand LPs. When we grew up with albums, we were very happy to move on to something else. You kind of recognize the inconvenience of them. It was really after moving to Durham about 15 years ago and just discovering astounding artifacts, like original pieces of art that were just sitting in used bins for one to three dollars. And I guess there was a certain amount of nostalgia as well. I, I enjoy playing them. One of my favorite art collections as a, as a cat person is this whole crate of albums that have cats on them. This is one of the most beautiful covers of all time by Quincy Jones. Long before YouTube, there were cats playing piano on album covers. I don't have a dog category. This is a collection where it's just hands. Food, face shots, psycho eyes back here. I'm a music lover in general, and my expertise is as a political philosopher. And in a way, those two did actually come together uh, as I started to think about some of the weird phenomena that I see in the history of the vinyl LP in the 1950s and 60s. As I've come to read biographies of many of these artists, I've been able to kind of fill in my own understanding of the times and of the artists and what they thought about music, what they thought about record companies, what they didn't like about them. I found this early Miles Davis record that had this white model and her child and this sailboat. Miles Davis didn't like it and had asked to have it changed. And then I sort of realized, well, actually, it's not the only album by a black artist that has a white woman on the cover. Uh, and that's, you know, I started finding others. And now I've eventually sort of found about three or 400 of them. I have two panels up here. They all have exactly the same artists in the same order. Here you have black artists who have white women on the covers, and here you have the artists themselves on the covers. This album came out in 1963. This was aimed to get on white radio, and somebody could have heard this and you know, fell in love with this artist and wanted to buy their music, and they go to their local record store, which would be in a white neighborhood if they were white. There's no way you could see this without thinking that you were looking at Dinah Washington. Whereas in fact, that's what Dinah Washington really looks like. The most important female singers of the era, they all have albums where there's some other woman on the cover under their name. This category, it helps us tell a story about the mechanisms of systemic racism within a society. It's a very vivid visual illustration of how an outrageous practice can hide in plain sight. The culture of America, the legacy of what it was and to some extent what it is are still kind of seen in motifs and images that we see on these covers.